Hello everyone and welcome to our next episode of Raven Creek Park here in Planet Zoo. And today we are building for the last animal that will have an outdoor habitat uh, in this zoo, uh, which is this Asian small cloud otter. The other ones of the, of the new wetlands animal pack will only have indoor habitats due to the climate and everything. I think I explained it in the past. And yeah, um, this habitat for them um, quite, uh, had quite a history um, in different designs I tried out before I settled with the one you now see uh, here in the video. Um, and mostly, uh, most of this uh, is due to the problems with deep diving in this game, since even if you are disabling um, the yeah, um, size requirements uh, in sandbox game, you still need to give them at least um, yellow or green space or the amount of Basically, at least needs to be yellow or green for them to order to show deep diving. Otherwise, they don't just don't do it. And this meant I had to yeah, basically rethink how I want to build this enclosure without giving them an enormous di diving space. And I hope Frontier will address this in the future and make it a little bit easier for us, uh, even in Sandbox, to show deep diving without giving them huge pools or um, enormous yeah, amounts of water. And that's why we, in the end, we settled in with uh, five um, otters. Um, despite, yeah, normally you would have quite a bunch because they are very social and playful animal. Um, simply because I, I didn't want to give them that huge amount of space, I, I couldn't give them because of the size of the uh, of the habitat. And if I remember to put it in um, in the post production, I you can see the previous attempt of my habitat here with a huge uh, deep water pool to the left and an underwater viewing but after yeah rethinking everything and looking at it with a new eye on the next day I just didn't like it and didn't fit the aesthetics and the idea of this zoo so I decided to scrap all of this and um, plan new and now we have this a little bit um, elevated pool on the right side uh, which is not that high, even it's only me a meter higher than the normal ground. And then uh, you have an outdoor viewing area, underwater viewing area for the otters. And we also will have one uh, in the inside. We have an in we also will have an indoor part because in the colder uh, months of the year here in in the, in the United States, uh, as where the zoo is set in, uh, you you can have otters outside um, in this climate. But uh, normally you should give them at least the possibility to go inside and have a more climate controlled uh, area there. And that's why we give them uh, also a bit of a bigger inside or yeah, inside enclosure where they can still dive, where they can still play around. But it's more climate controlled, we can uh, warm this thing up. And if it's getting warmer outside, um, we, they can also go outside. So yeah. And also you might see in the end that I didn't really put a roof on the inside part and also not on the backstage area because otherwise this video would have been um, significantly longer and I didn't want to give you a yeah, half an hour long video or even, long, uh, even more. Um, and the plan for now is that we will have three more episodes for this part of the zoo, for this wetlands area of the zoo. Uh, one dedicated to the platypus, one dedicated to the spectacled caiman. Both of, the, of them will be have in, only inside or indoor enclosures, and then we will have one where we do all the small bits and and things here and there, like yeah, building the main building that isn't even existing yet because I uh, purposely didn't make that to have the ability to make changes and size um, yeah changes uh, if I need them. And so the last episode will be a little bit of a clean up where we've also fill all the um, empty yeah, greenery parts where we do all the backstage stuff, um, yeah, all the planting and everything. And the, of course, the main attractions, the main central building. And this will be the final episode. And then we will have a tour of this wetlands area where we can look at all everything in completion. So this is the plan for now. But let's talk about otters, yeah. So I decided to yeah, split this habitat into two parts and um, yeah, raise the indoor area of, of, of the habitat a little bit, also uh, around one meter. So you are uh, on eye level with the otters if you are inside. 
they can come right up to, up to the glass and you can see them yeah on eye level and a little bit of a trick so the in the um, what, what the guests don't see and what you see for um, early in the video is that I made a little bit of a ramp in the backstage area where the others can go up and then they are in the indoor area and yeah um, the um, the Asian smuggler order is uh, as I said what I said, I don't know, <laughs> but it's it's the smallest otter species we have on the planet and it's found throughout, all throughout uh, Southeast Asia. So it's also very popular um, animal in zoos and even one that you can easily find in a lot of smaller zoos, uh, which also makes it a, a nice fit for this zoo as we are a bit of a smaller zoo uh, on the budget, si on budget size. Also, this was another reason why I changed um, the previous plan for this habitat with the big indoor underwater viewing as I just f uh, f thought that this might be too elaborate, too crazy and too uh, yeah, money intensive for a smaller zoo. So we stick with the more easier doable outside water viewing basically where you don't have to dig into the ground um, yeah, make th think sure everything is waterproof. You just have um, this raised pile of dirt and then they have a pool down there, uh, a little bit of plaster as you do later. And yeah, um, of course covering up everything was a bit of a challenge because um, the terrain uh, in this game, as you might know, is a little bit tricky sometimes, especially when water comes into play and fences. So um, I had a few changes here and there every time and I had to take out the water. Um, yeah couple of times to get it right and I can say diving is still af after almost uh, two years is still very complicated to pull up off in this game because animals are so finicky when it comes to diving especially with the big pool you see in the background um, I couldn't really um, yeah, decorate it and um, even if I put just a small uh, some small rocks in there uh, just that it looks a little bit nicer the others immediately wouldn't have had enough space to dive um, so in the end I decided that these pools will mostly stay um, yeah, very much clean and undecorated which is a shame but in the end I think it doesn't look too bad and you can tell me in the comments what your ideas are um, what I could do apart from giving them a, a more diving space because this is yeah just not possible with the available space we have um, to make it e maybe look a little bit nicer if you think it needs uh, more de decoration. Um, we also have some planting around here uh, uh, on this corner so guests can't see this part where it transitions up the hill um, so they don't break or to not try to break the immersion and then they can come come around the corner um, it's planned for the future that this underwater, outside underwater viewing will be roofed, so there will be um, a roof above it, so the guests don't stay, don't have to stay in the rain or in the open when it's raining or when it's very sunny and warm. There will be, it will be a little bit covered. Um, this will also be part of the last year uh, overhaul episode where we do all the smaller bits. Um, simply because of the time, of the timing, and this episode already got quite. Yeah, al already costed quite a lot of time, uh, even more than I imagined. Um, you always think when you're building something that it's easily being done in a couple, yeah, maybe in one or two hours. But I think in the end it took me around, uh, let go light, four hours, four to five hours, um, with all the changes and minor things here and there that I had to do. And yeah, even when cutting it in the end and, and cutting out stuff where I just idled around and just tried different things, it still is around 24, uh, 24 minutes. Um, even when I speed it up uh, six times the, the speed. Uh, yeah, um, now we come to the indoor part. Um, as I said, it's also raised above one meter, so the water is actually two meters deep. So they can dive. Um, luckily, Frontier changed this in. Uh, I don't know what what which update was. Was the I think it was a North America update, um, where they gave individual animals individual yeah, diving needs, um, so that not all animals always need four meter deep water in order to dive. Um, if I would 
if the others would still require four meters, uh, I think I would have, yeah, basically I would have uh, designed habitat with them not diving in mind so that they can't dive. But luckily, um, two meters now is enough for the small cloud otters to dive, and I could give them that space. And they actually do dive quite a lot. Um, sometimes they are a little bit, uh, yeah. <laughs> they they don't uh, don't want to dive and then it looks like it's broken but uh, every, every now and then they do a, sm a, a few leaps and and tricks in the water and I have to say Frontier did an amazing job with the animations. Of course, some of them are similar to the giant order we got with the Aquatics DLC, um, but I think this is totally um, okay seeing as they basically both are other species, which means. Yeah, you don't lose much, and they are still giving. They are uh, they're still bringing a lot of new stuff t um, to this game, and I have to say they are really, really cute. Um, they I think now that I saw most of them, I would even rank them as one of my favorites of this pack, uh, next to the capybara and the crane that we already placed in the zoo, um, because they are really cute. They 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 roll around on this on her on their backs. They now, after the last um, small update, they also stand up on their hind legs, as it's uh, quite more often. Um, if you didn't know, um, before the last update, uh, the order would or the small claw would only stand up on their hind legs, which is kind of a famous uh, thing they do in uh, real life. They would only stand up when they are interact with um, the bubble machine enrichment, and this was quite a shame because uh, it was mean that the, this animation was quite rare but now after the update they do it more often um, they even stand up just to sniff around or to look uh, at something and this al already gives it more yeah gives it a more uh, uh, realistic uh, yeah touch to it and we are now building uh, the small indoor uh, or the small uh, gateway for them to go indoors um, we will have more additional of these uh, later on the right side, and the, which are will not be um, which don't work. Um, so we will not, or I will not build a functioning indoor section um, for the others. So no, yeah, sleeping quarters, night quarters, um, simply because of the size and the amount of work. Um, if we still have. Uh, nothing to do after finishing everything else i might do it but otherwise um it's just yeah it, it's i use that space where the in night quarters would be now for the keeper hut so that the keeper can prepare the food um if i find another solution that might be maybe i will go back to it and add some night quarters but otherwise um their sleeping area is just in the indoor area of this ha of this habitat right here at the glass where we are at the moment so um they can sleep there and the guests can see them sleeping right in front of the glass yeah we're also adding some flower beds in the inner part so it doesn't look too uh yeah too bland in there and only a lot of dirt uh, we're adding some flower beds that we later yeah um, decorate a lot and we have these mirrors on the back side so it just doesn't look only looks like concrete or plaster what uh, plaster there uh, and more like a, a thicker wall um that even supports this structure um this is a tip i can give you if you have if you're building uh, indoor areas and you build in details indoor areas so where stuff happens indoors um always try to have another wall in on the inside of the area so the wall looks a bit thicker and like, it act, like it's actually a wall that supports something. If you only use the outside wall and it as, it's as thin as mine is, it can look a little bit weird um, from time to time. And yeah, um, we are now separating the area where the keeper area works, it's a backstage area and where the guest area ends. And then, yeah, we come to the problem, as I already said, with the outside, outside pool um, where I had uh, I, I needed to be very carefully where I put the plaster walls and I wanted to plaster the map uh, up uh, later I will use the mud walls for that um, because it gives it more of an artificial look um, which is kind of what I want in the zoo and because of course uh, a zoo is also there to immerse the guests so that they think they see these animals in their natural habitats 
but um, I think a goal in AR building habitats uh, in this game, not in real life, in this game is to also always have these these tiny things that break the immersion and that um, yeah make sure make clear that this is artificially made, that this is a zoo habitat, not the real life uh, or a national park. So I use the plaster, which I later change out for the mud walls, um, to, yeah, to give this kind of yeah, artificial look that this is an artificial pool that is not uh, yeah, naturally there. And the rest of the habitat, of course, will be more natural with a lot of plants, a lot of rocks. I also uh, purposely used the uh, yeah the real or the non-fake rocks um, for one because it's cheaper for the zoos to use rocks that are just in the area. Uh, because I saw a lot of uh, habitats online with n normal rocks, and second because it's it's more immersive for the guests if they if they're not fake rocks. And um, a lot of people, when, while we talk about it, um, ask me where I get my um, uh, my ideas from. If I just copy habitats from the real life, or if I yeah um, think of all of this myself. And if it's I wouldn't brag and say I all I, all I came up with is uh, made by myself and I'm a huge genius, that's not what I am. Um, but it's a mixture of the two. Of course, um, lots of it is uh, made by myself because it has to fit in the environment I'm building and I can't just, I can't could <laughs> copy a, a habitat from real world and put it in, but it also has to fit in the general concept of this zoo or this park. So I... Uh, I use a lot of websites, some awesome uh, websites are like Zoolex or ZooShed that are totally free to use and you can find on the internet um, where you get a ton of real life pics from zoos and even some behind the scenes material like layouts and uh, you have uh, blueprints of habitats even uh, down to stuff of what down to stuff like which plants they used and which enrichment items or which di um, dimensions the night quarters are. And I look at them. I also looked at them for small cloud other habitats. Um, I saw a lot of them with these, yeah, these streams, these water streams and waterfalls, where you, where the keeper can basically put the food in, and the uh, others can hunt them in the water or can search for them in the water. And then I look how what I have, what I what what space I have for these animals plant, and how what I can fit in there, combining a lot of the ideas I saw online and taking elements from this uh, uh, from these habitats and combining them to the one to the habitat I'm uh, wanting to build and yeah um, speaking of habitat we are now um, yeah close to the end basically we are now building the rocks and the plants um, one of my last steps I usually do um, all the ve vegetation stuff and I decided um, against using bamboo. We used bamboo in the crane habitat um, to give it more the Asian feel. And I first thought of also using bamboo here because it's also an Asian species. But I decided against it and went for more like um, wetlands plants like we have a weeping willow and the new trees from the um, new DLC. But uh, we go for more... Um, fitting uh, habitat here um, with not a lot of Asian plants, but plants that grow in this area, like they just uh, fenced this part of, the, of this area up and then added uh, the others to it and let a little of landscaping with this, uh, with this artificial river um, and some branches here and there. We also added some uh, vents uh, in the water area, uh, so that when you would want to clean um, the pool and the, uh, uh, and the stream and everything you get, could easily drain the water and clean everything. Um, it's another small detail that adds a lot of uh, real realism to the um, to this build. And yeah, um, looking at the time, I would say I will leave you now to the, uh, the rest of the video with some music. And I see you then in the end of the video uh, for the real uh, real time part, where we look at uh, all the details and everything. Some things maybe sh maybe have changed uh, from the video uh, to the real time part because I usually after I I, uh, I yeah I finish recording an episode um, I usually go through everything and do some small bits in here that I didn't like back that I don't like then and uh, did back then and change them up or add some things so 
if you see some things that have changed and that are not in the video, don't worry, you didn't miss anything. I didn't cut it out anything. Uh, it's just that I yeah, um, went over everything again and tried to perfect it and make it really fitting for this build. So yeah, I will leave you now to the music and I see you then at the end of the video. So and here we are now in the game in real in the real time part and we start not in the on the outside exhibit but on the inside one well inside um there ain't much of an inside yet um but as you said this will come with over time uh we yeah 
It's basically uh, the second outside enclosure. And we are right in time because our small friends, the otters, are coming inside for a nice little bit of sleep. Um, yeah, this is their inside pool, uh, which will be heated during the winter. So they still have a lovely place to uh, to dive and to play. And yeah, they can sleep here. And if we go outside, we have the amazing outside habitat. Very lush, very green, lots of movement and water. <laughs> and one is actually scaling <laughs> the waterfall uh, uh, just at this moment. And I'm especially in love with this fence. I think um, the idea with this fence is really nice with these yeah, double layers um, as it has the same on the other side and the wooden planks in front of it so the guests can uh, yeah rest their hands on it it's, it's not too it's not too high it's not too low it's right from the size and our orders are everywhere around this habitat here and <laughs> um, all I'm uh, all that is missing are of course the education signs and of course some smaller details on the building itself like an actual roof uh, some decals and everything but this will be we will, we will doing in the last episode and if we follow the water f uh, the flow of the water f so from the little lake down here up the waterfall up the hill we come of course this is a crane um, indoor habitat so you can see the cranes back here and if we go around this corner which is also not decorated yet as I as my main focus was on yeah, on the habitat, not uh, on the surroundings. We have our underwater viewing for uh, the outside part. Um, and actually there is one. Uh, would be even better, would he dive now for us? But I think he is a little bit tired. He will also join his his friends in the inside area. But yeah, um, as I said, this will get a, a small roof over it. Um, this will be, and then this will also be, yeah. Uh, blocked here so guests can't wander into the wild here so there will be a wall or maybe a gate so only the keepers can access the building that will be here in the end and yeah so this will also come in the last the maintenance episode so to say but in in general I'm really happy how this habitat turned out it definitely looks still simple it doesn't look too elaborate and too fancy um, and the otters uh, definitely have a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, ignore the stinky fish that is laying in the water here. Uh, our keeper needs to do a better job. Um, but yeah, um, really happy how it turned out. Also the inside part. There we have most of them sitting here. <laughs> He's coming right for the window. <laughs> Hello. Ah, oh, they are the, really cute. But yeah. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope I will see you in the next one when we do either build for the platypus or the caiman. And yeah, um, leave a comment down below what animal you like the most and what thi you think you I could do better or I could improve on this habitat. I'm always open for suggestions and ideas. And until then, stay safe. Yeah, um, Remember, you are loved and you are special in the world. There's no one other like you and I hope I see you in the next episode. So goodbye everyone and I see you. Bye.